Ladies and gentlemen, it is a pleasure to debate here on an issue which is as relevant today, if not more, than it has ever been. This topic, to me, transcends time. It is not purely about the criminalization of Holocaust denial, but the social importance of the incitement of hate crime. We live in a democratic society and in a world where free speech is exalted. Yet, when hate crimes still exist and grow, we must find a balance between the two. Holocaust denial takes free speech to the extreme. It is not only historically inaccurate, but deeply offensive to many communities. In examining the ways in which the freedom to deny the Holocaust affects democratic societies, we can see the social impact of anti-Semitism and hate crimes. It is for this reason that I oppose the motion and wholeheartedly support the criminalization of Holocaust denial. But before I continue, it falls upon me to introduce the proposition. Our first speaker is Harrison Edmonds, a second year history student at University College. Next, we have Sir Richard Evans, a renowned historian and author, best known for his expertise on Germany in the 19th and 20th centuries. His most famous works include In Defense of History and The Third Reich. He was an expert witness for the defense in the high profile libel case of David Irving against the historian, Professor Lipset, who is our final proposition speaker. A professor of modern Jewish history and Holocaust studies at Emory University, Professor Lipset has authored many books, including The Eichmann Trial and Denying the Holocaust. These are your, pro these are your proposition speakers, Mr. President, and they are most welcome. The story of the boy in the striped pyjamas is one familiar, I am sure, to the majority, if not all of us present here. The story of a young Jewish boy living on one side of a fence wearing striped pyjamas and Bruno, the son of a Nazi, living on the other side. As many of you will be aware, the story ends with both young boys dying, gassed in a chamber in what is said to be Auschwitz. For me, alongside other children's books, such as When Hitler Stole Pink Rabbit, this novel represents my first introduction to the Holocaust. Being a first year geography student and having not taken history since the age of 16, I knew rather little about the role of laws in Holocaust denial. Until recently, my knowledge was primarily defined by what I had learned reading children's books. But that's the point. Every European child is introduced to the Holocaust at a young age. The nature of the ending of the novel to a young child is shocking and appalling. John Boyne, the author, created fiction, but it draws on the terrible truth. And we teach children the truth, the truth that the Holocaust is an abhorrent, yet undeniable, fact of history. However, the question to be raised here is not whether or not Holocaust can be denied, but whether criminalization of Holocaust deniers is right. The problem arises when we consider the laws banning Holocaust obviously entail an infringement of freedom of expression. While this proposition will evidently question whether this infringement of freedom of expression is legally, legally justifiable, I, on the other hand, in opposing this motion, believe that the criminalization of Holocaust denial is wholly justifiable. This is not to deny or even undermine the importance of free speech, but there is a balance to be struck here. There is a plethora of historical, moral and legal arguments to be debated here, and I suspect they will no doubt get aired. But what I want to concentrate on is the implications of hate crime in societies. I have no doubt everyone in this room accepts that there are bounds on liberty. Freedom of expression and belief need to be balanced against the equally fundamental human rights of others. Yet Holocaust denial, anti-Semitism and hate crime still exist indicating the need for legal action. However, let's also note and celebrate the socially progressive change in the last decade, helping us know what hate crime is and its pernicious effect on us all. If we are allowed the Holocaust deniers to go unprosecuted, we are simply extending the arena for hate speech. And let's not beat around the bush with this. Holocaust denial is a form of hate speech. There's a common maxim often used in reasoning that if it looks like a duck, swims like a duck, and quacks like a duck, then it is a duck. Firstly, Holocaust denial is anti-Semitic, plain and simple. I'm no historian, but as you can probably tell from my accent, I do come from Yorkshire. 
the location of the worst pogrom in the history of Britain, the murder of 150 Jews in 1159 in York. The citizens of, the citizens of York had tuned, in, tuned into the blood libel, stories that Jews ritually murdered Christian children. The same happened in the 20th century, when more modern anti-Semitic ideas spread and wildly held incorrect views across Europe that Jews should be accountable for a range of crimes is arguably part of the reason behind the Holocaust. By denying the horrors of the Holocaust, we are effectively allowing anti-Semitic views to permeate our society. The enormity of the Holocaust means a free and democratic society is put on permanent duty to, to protect individuals and to protect minorities. <coughs> Democracy traditionally upholds the values of free speech, but as the arguments of Shamri Chakrabarti and Liberty have shown, democracy has evolved. A democracy is there to uphold and protect society. Yet, if Holocaust deniers are left unprosecuted, the freedom of individuals to live a life free from hate crime is threatened. Sadly, anti-Semitism can be awfully subtle. One can hide ulterior motives behind free speech and historical arguments. My second point questions the motivation of denial and, once again, the point also draws from my Yorkshire background and some very passionate and assertive community views about the treatment of Palestinians. I'm talking about the city of Bradford, a place where foreign policy with Israel matters more than most, given a large and concentrated Pakistani Muslim community. More cars and houses display the Palestinian flag than anywhere else in the UK. It's the words of former MP George Galloway I want to reflect on. He stresses that there is a fundamental qualitative difference between the capital H, Holocaust, and other genocides or wars. The Nazis planned and executed a final solution to remove an entire people from the face of the earth. Mr Galloway also points out that denial must be followed by a question of what this means and whether there is a hidden motivation for the denial of the Holocaust. The motivation behind Holocaust denial simply lies in hurt or the promotion of a view which is harmful. The denial of the Holocaust is particularly prevalent in autocratic societies and thus we must question the motivation of Holocaust denial in democratic societies, unveiling underlying political agenda and hate crime. Now for my third point. While you cannot necessarily out the motivation, you can measure the impact on a community. I'd like to switch the arguments around a bit. What would community relations be like if Atlantic slave trade were denied? Ask Afro-Caribbean communities if they felt we grossly underplayed British contributions to slavery. Our Prime Minister would certainly like to downplay any views on reparations for the slave trade, and that's my speculative view. But let's focus on more recent events. By implication, 9-11 led an Islamophobia that we're failing to deal with. Strong emotions created a distorting effect on how majority communities viewed Muslims. Fear fed fear, and terrorists exploited and multiplied this. Too much tolerance breeds intolerance. In allowing Holocaust denial to go unprosecuted, we are perhaps being tolerant, and yet in doing so, are breeding intolerance. I have grave doubts about the overall clumsiness in which democracies have addressed this recent dilemma, but I also think decency in our communities can settle this. Back to Yorkshire again. <laughs> Leeds was the hometown for homegrown copycat terrorists, but it's also my hometown. Things aren't perfect in Leeds, but I feel I come from a city with a strong multicultural tradition. There have been Jewish and Muslim mayors in the last decade, and growing up in the aftermath of 7-7, kids like me perhaps received a stronger message than most about cohesion and the harm community conflict can bring. Harm is what Holocaust denial is about. It's about undermining the safety and integrity of communities. Ultimately, it harms all of us. It's a subtle doctrine, but you need to avoid what I call sophisticated and spacious arguments. People who seek to grossly deny the qualitative and quantitative implications of the Holocaust cause harm. They cause hate. This can quickly escalate from an emotional response to a crime or fear of crime. That British synagogues and mosques and Muslim and Jewish cemeteries need security guards happens not because arguments aren't being won, but because criminal intolerance is tolerated. And this is something that, that diminishes point. us all.
declined. <laughs> In summary, I'll let lawyers judge the crime, decide where historical re-examination differs from distortion. But gross denial should be seen for what it is, hate speech and hate crime. It should be unlawful. I urge you to oppose the motion.